I am trained as a clinical microbiologist from Kasturu Medical College. But how I went there was very interesting. I am a village fellow. I grew up in a place called Gulbarga. Very small, small villages around Gulbarga where Kannada was the only language I knew. English was taught to us in Kannada. I think many of you would also have similar background where English was taught to you in Tamil as well, you know, to translate and explain to you what it means. I think that's a similar background everybody starts. Many of us would start that because India is a land of multiple languages and multiple dialects within the languages, right? So let that not be a criteria for not climbing higher in life. Never say that, oh, I am from village, I don't know much, I don't have much exposure. Always look at the positive line of life. Then, from there, it started out and I went for my, my parents thought there is some spark in me. So they sent me to Mangalore. I went to St. Aloysius College and there I was the last bencher. I had full oiled hair and you know, chappal and you know, side bag and sitting in the last bench. Nobody talked to me because I didn't know English. I did not know spoken English at all in my 11th standard. And uh, I thought this is very debilitating for my future. So read the last words of Swami Vivekananda. Make your own future. So somebody had to make a decision and who makes it other than your own self, right? Whether you want to be top of the line or you want to be in medial, middle or in the bottom of the line is your choice you got to make. And you got to make the right choice at the right time. And it's never too late to make that. So I came from Mangalore to Bengaluru. When I was coming in the train, I made a decision, you know, I'm going to make a different guy. In the train, I tucked in my shirt, wiped off the oil, and I got out. I said, from today onwards, it's going to be different Manish. And I think from then onwards, the life changed for me. I picked up a little bit English. Some of the swear words I didn't know. People used to use a lot of swear words in class. And I used to come home and I used to ask my uncle, what does this mean? So he was very embarrassed, of course. See, first he took me to a bookshop. In those days, we didn't have internet, of course. It's in mid-80s. He got me Oxford English Dictionary. He said, first check there before you ask me what those words mean, right? Some of the words are uncomfortable to speak at home. And that's where I started, everything started. From there, I chose a subject called microbiology when I was in seventh grade, though I was in a village setup. Because the chapter on Louis Pasteur excited me, showing that there is an invisible world in front of my eyes, and I became curious. I went on to become the science secretary. I requested the teacher and I told her, can I become the science secretary? And she said, okay. So I I written all this on a blog on LinkedIn as well as my blog, how I went to be. And when I started reading about microbiology, it started exciting me that it's such a beautiful world and such an ecosystem, the most highly organized ecosystem and collaborative and taking people along and growing along, that happens in a microbial world. And we have a lot to learn. We have microbiologists in, in Dr. Ishwar in here as well. That's an amazing science and fascinating science and you're all using that world as a tool rather than the source itself for making whatever products you're going to make in biotechnology. So microbial world is awesome. And uh, well, it's a stereotype like uh, he, Chala Pandey mentioned, doctor or engineer was the days. Anybody should choose those lines only as, even for you it was the same thing, right? So, medicine was the first choice for me, but I didn't take up medicine. I said, I'm going to do graduation in microbiology. And there were only two colleges which had the course, uh, and I was a batch number two. It was only BSc microbiology, <coughs> taught by botanists, not microbiologists. And uh, so, it's a very different experience to learn microbiology that way. But fermentation, of course, we did learn. We did ferment and make wine in the laboratory. We had beer factory exposures because Vijay Malaya was growing, already soaring quite well in Bangalore. So we went to laboratories and saw how they make. We tasted already in college, but didn't continue. I personally didn't continue drinking further on, but of course my friends did. Because the taste was very, <laughs> you know, continuously starts tingling you more. Okay, so then, <coughs> I thought I should specialize. So I went to the University of Bangalore and we challenged the Vice Chancellor stating that, why don't you have a master's in microbiology? Because after graduation, what do I do? Because I want to study further. And uh, as I told you earlier, there was no, uh, what do you call, internet. So we had a fat book called as a directory of libraries, I mean universities in the libraries, the fat books. And went on checking which universities has got microbiology. And I found 
customer medical college had and CMC Velour had MSc medical microbiology. I wanted to specialize. It's a three year microbiology course. It's a clinical microbiology. So I went and sat. Uh, there are only four seats every year they take students. We got scratch. That's a different journey. I can't talk too much time. Uh, so how I got into microbiology, MSc in KMC my, is written very well on my uh, blog on LinkedIn. It's a long journey, but I did get into there. From there, I started working in Bangalore. Uh, for four years, I was consulting to seven hospitals. That is the punchline. All my life, except seven years, when I was working for Orchid Pharma, I had one job. In other than the seven years, I always had a side hustle. I never did one job all my life. It's a stereotype thinking that we all get educated to do one job. That's good. It is necessary if you want to be a corporate setup or an academic setup. Not always in academic setup also you can have side hustles. But if you get into corporate, you sign an agreement that you cannot work any other than one job, right? That's a commitment you make. But I have always worked more than one job, so I had seven labs I used to visit and I used to make good money in those days. Got married and then I thought I was always treated as a non-medical guy because I'm an MSc in a hospital setting. I said, quit that line. I went and did my PhD. This was in 1995-96. The internet was just coming in. Internet was just coming in, so I went and uh, I wrote to a professor. I went on searching for you know, various professors online. It was a dial-up. I've seen in the movies, that sound comes right, dial up tone. Those were the days, okay, dial up. I think 156 uh, kbps, 256 kbps was the speed, I think, those days. Very low speed internet. And uh, I contacted one professor, Jean Claire, from Harvard Medical School. And I wrote to her, and she was very keen to help me in those days, 1995-96. So I enrolled for a PhD, and I did my PhD in capsular polysaccharides of uh, Staphylococcus aureus. And then I joined Dr. Reddy's. And uh, the first molecule, DRF 8417, anti infective molecule which Reddy's ever had, which went to phase one and failed, was my. I was the one who identified it first. So after that, uh, I thought I should move out. There was a reason, which I can't speak publicly, of course, and I felt that's not the right way somebody should grow in a career by having only the right connections, but I said, let me build my own. So I applied, there's a Medzilla was the site. When I applied on that, I got a position somewhere in northern Sweden, just 500 miles away from the Arctic Circle called Umeå University. I just took it. I said, wherever in the world I want to get out from here first and build my skills. That was the risk, right? And I traveled to that country with $50 in my pocket. I didn't know the value of money or probably, you know, how, what a risk I was taking. I was married. I had two boys already, but still I went there. And from there, my entire life shifted to a hardcore advanced research microbiologist. I collaborated. Even though I was in Sweden, I had collaborations in US, Finland, and, you know, mid of Europe, France. We were, I worked with multiple countries already. The point here is how to have a collaborative approach in anything you do. It's you alone cannot have all the skills in your life. But you can identify skills on everybody else and you cannot own anything because you cannot take anything with you anyway in leaving the world, right? So why don't you share that with everybody? When you make a collaborative collective effort, the growth is faster. So from there, I went to present at, uh, in the US, uh, my paper, and there it was such an interesting thing. Multiple universities, universities had offered me a position, and I chose uh, Johns Hopkins Medical School to do my postdoc. I did my postdoc there in infectious diseases, uh, pediatric infectious diseases. I worked on seven projects, published 11 papers, four first author, uh, the rest of them were my you know, co papers. The reason is collaboration. When you work with multiple people, your brain not expands in one direction, but expands in multiple directions. You get to see more of the things in multiple ways. I'm giving all this, it's kind of, I was feeling, am I going to brag myself? Well, you know, Bhuvaneshwari told me this, is, it's like a bragging session. So he said, I have already bragged, so you can continue to do that. I feel it's very uncomfortable to talk too much about myself, but to inspire you guys, I'm telling this, if you find it bragging, just 
ignore that part of it, okay? If it is inspiring, do take it and think in those lines and need not be the same path for everyone. Build your own future. That's very important. We got to build our own future. So then I joined, I was invited to John, I mean, uh, USFDA. I joined USFDA, started working in USFDA. The project was a long project, but uh, I finished within six months, went to Washington DC, presented to the federal government. They were very impressed. So they offered me a green card and they wanted me to be their citizen, of course, ultimately. That's the whole goal. And I said, no, I came to this country to learn the skills and go back to my nation because I want to be a nation. That was my passion. That's how a very patriotic guy, those days at least. Now it is waning away because things change, right? So your priorities also change over the period of time. So came back to India and joined Orchid Pharma. That's where my journey of invention of n matazobactam started. The first molecule ever invented from Indian soil in anti-infective space to have got US FDA, UK MHR and EMA approvals. And that's the journey we began. We made history for the nation. As it, nation has to be proud, but nation doesn't know much about it. The world is approved, our Indian regulators are still evaluating the molecule. Let's see when it comes out. But the world is going to get the benefit of that medication already. But India, maybe we hope, we hope soon we should get for that. But when you invent in a company, you've got to remember one thing. You write off all your rights over the patents to that company because that company has taken the risk on you. I don't have any right to demand. People come and tell me, you are the major inventor, you are the project manager as well, you know, who drove the project from ideation till now. No, that's not our right. That, because imagine how much money they have put into so many programs and one succeeded. The money the company invests on you is based on your skill, they're taking a risk on you. So when they take a risk on you, the responsibility and the burden is higher on you, right? And project management, of course, Conflicts do come in, that's what project management office is. And I know it because later on I became head of project management, uh, managing five therapeutic areas at Orchid Pharma, uh, having you know, multiple clinical sites in so many sites. Uh, it's, it's not a joke to be a project management guy. It's, you need a lot of patience. I even bought two books, you know. Uh, difficult communications and uh, conflicting communications. How do you do it? I didn't know that, I'm a scientist, right? So I got into management and I grew well in Orchid Pharma. And in Orchid, the, as a company, it underwent a you know, very depressive time. It started falling down. We went into almost bankruptcy as a company. When Orchid started falling down, R&D is the first one to be struck because R&D is like deserts. You don't need ice cream every meal, right? You can do away without ice cream. Similar was R&D. R&D had to be shut down. But when I wanted to quit much before that, the management wanted me to continue. So I said, okay, my side hustle is Orchid now. Right? I made Orchid as my, as my side hustle and I came out and I, because I had done well already, we had an opportunity to join AstraZeneca, but I chose to join a hospital setting because I thought we can give back to the society. That was our passion. So I joined Martha's where I was driving seven clinical disciplines research. We did well for five years and then I went on to Acharya group of institutions as a research director and then I imagine, now listen to me, what happened was I started as a clinical microbiologist, hat number one. Hat number two, I became a researcher, right? Hat number three, I become an inventor. Hat number four, I became a clinical research head, right? After five years, hat number six, that is, I became to the level of vice chancellor designate of a private university, but hat number six. Even that I got bored up five years. So, and then I said, okay, this is enough because I put process in place because project management skills come in handy and I made the entire setup very beautiful. The things, the files which used to move once in a month, to get anything done was only 24 hours process setting. It's, everything is process. I started my own company in 2012, 22, right? That's my seventh hat, which I'm wearing right now, right? For all these things, what people can grow in a single career, they start as a tutor 
and they retire as a principal or a vice, up to vice chancellor. That is one line. Good. But I personally believe that I got to keep changing hands. I get bored very easily. You know, maybe hyperactive mind. After some years, ah, this is too much. So in my company also, I am not doing one job. I consult three companies. Uh, one is Orchid Pharma, Symbiotis Biopharma, and the third is Anna Biotechnologies and uh, Microbial Investigations, which is a Swiss-based company. I consult, that's where I earn most of my revenues. They pay me very well, really very well, that I invest that money into an R&D program of my company. And there, I have a very unique model of running my company. A placement officer was asking me for placement positions. I said, I can't offer any placement to anybody. The reason is, mine is lean management. In Bangalore, I am part of a large consortium of biotech companies, and I know how many of them are performing, underperforming, suboptimally utilizing their companies. So I rent out their facilities based on my experiments. So my capex is zero. I don't invest zero. My investment in capital is zero. As a startup, I can afford to do that. So when I want to do fermentation, I'll go to a company where I do the fermentation part. I pay him rent for that, and I come out. I have two scientists who work with me. They go there and do the work and come back. And that way, now, we already have in one and a half year the first lead molecule, sorry, hit molecule, which is now hit to lead transformation happening in an, for a urinary tract infection, right? Then I have one more discovery program that is in microbiome research. That I'm doing in uh, Mysore, one of the laboratories. That scientist now has registered for a PhD. That becomes part of a project. She gets a project. I mean, a PhD as well as I get my work done as well. So I'm funding for that. I'm giving you ideas of how else you can think other than the regular jobs, okay? In addition to this, most of my time I spend in pro bono on antimicrobial resistance action collaborative engagement where I'm trying to bring people around the world together. Today, I have been part of the US government's uh, PACAR, Presidential Advisory Committee on Antibacterial Resistance for three years. And from this year, for the next three years, from this year on three years, I am part of the UK government's PACE. PACE is a you know a pathway for antimicrobial clinical efficacy, where I become I'm one of the consultants for UK government on PACE now, and I'm also part of GARDP, which is WHO's organization called as Global Antibiotic R&D Partnership. So starting from a village fellow who did not know even the first swear word in life <laughs> when I was in first PUC to where I have reached. For all this, I'm a very spiritual guy. I consult internally to my God. My God, I mean, you can, no God can be described to anybody how it is because your impression of God, when you teach me, I will perceive it with my own filters. So nobody can describe God. God has to be experienced personally. So if you believe in, if you don't believe in, whatever it is, your, your own inspiration you call it as. So I'm, I pray, even for the during invention time, I used to pray, Lord, grant me the wisdom and open the eyes of my heart to see the creation you already kept there. I cannot see it with my, no, with my knowledge filters. I need that inspiration, something which is beyond science can teach me. Because my knowledge is very limited. My knowledge is so, so minuscule in this whole universe, right? I am not that smart. So I need that extra inspiration. And whatever knowledge I have acquired, in addition to my master's, PhD, postdocs, parallel skill development, so parallel skills, the amount of certifications I have done, about 24 certifications altogether parallel when I'm working because I constantly upskilled myself. I went into project management skills, I went to HR skills, I done a diploma from IGNO, even on management, HR management. Every, I went on building lateral skills. So now I have multiple arms. I can run a company, I can do social work, and I can do drug discovery. Everything one can do. If I can do it, a village fellow, I think you who are exposed to technology from day one of your you know, youth, you guys can do amazing things in your life. Never under, underestimate the power that is within you. Each of us are unique creation of God. He said he doesn't claim his gender, right? I always say, I'm on ninth, I'm on a panel, all three women and I'm the one guy on gender, okay? I always say I don't believe in this gender. So everybody attacks me first. Then I tell, there is nothing called gender equality. There is gender equity. Gender itself is a misnomer, is a perception for me. Because it's each, we can go on expanding that line. So it is a never-ending one, right? So we have only three sexes. 
male female and intersex biological as a biologist i can speak rest all is the gender de definitions we can give and address them separately so when you're hiring a person working with a person you just look at look at them as homo sapiens having a skill that fits in your requirements of your job that's all i look at right i just hire people when i want it and i work with them also so you have to believe that each one of us are a unique child of god each one of us uh, there are no identical twins having same skills so what are we talking of comparing and competing with anybody he mentioned about uh, you know competitions right so when inclusivity about people and he also took a talk about self inclusion my children always prayed when they're going to the exam also they used to say god bless me to write exam well and bless all my classmates everyone should get good marks everyone should come first that is called inclusivity not only me winning let me win with everybody so that is taking people along right now 5 minutes i'm going to switch gears uh tell you what how to pursue your research okay i'm going to switch gears now next 5 minutes and i'll end there <clears throat> uh when you're thinking of any project or anything you want to do look at it from the global perspective all my earlier speakers have addressed this one i'll tell you some tools how you can do that which is what i do ending poverty correct first and to encourage prosperity and to protect the planet with these three in mind the united nations has come up with 17 sustainable developmental goals now keep them as a target and if you are in india go and look up there is a technology vision document written about 20 years ago for 2035 by government of india which is 13 goals in that one from 17 it has come to 13 you see if you address any of them you are not only achieving your success of your own lives but you are aligning in solving global problems of sustainability this world is one we don't have one more world around us or one more earth around us so what can we do to contribute to the sustainable developmental goals through those aligned goals of the nation your grant applications usually are aligned in these lines so if you connect this your success rate is very high always look at the unmet need what is that unmet need and uh, shiva mentioned also about long term goals right what are the long term goals of the world you look at not only your goals look at the world's long term goals and then you align your goals with that you have a fast track you move faster in your career i reached to the top by the age of 36 i was already you know top management because have additional skills have additional skills and demonstrate and for all these things you need to have first is faith in yourself and believe that you are unique and there is nobody like you and nobody can compete with you only you can compete with yourself that's the first thing second thing is when you believe that you have the great appetite for taking risk and believe that the land where you're bo born in and the land where you are going to land in has got its own own microbiota so ensure that you carry your microbiota wherever you are and maintain it very well don't let it lose its diversity because by adopting the western culture in indian nation your diversity starts falling down that affects your whole personality we are 85% microbiota only 15% human cells by number not by size so always respect your microbiota thank you very much